Hello and welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about the client server model. We're going to talk about the basics of how a front end reaches out to a back end. And then we're going to actually develop our own back end Golang web server. So stay tuned and let's go ahead and dive right in to the client server model. So what is the client server model? Essentially, the client server model is a commonly used paradigm in today's modern systems, which consists basically of a client requesting some data from a server and a server sending some data back to that client. So let's call our client C here, and let's just call our server S. And essentially, when the client is reaching out to the server, it's sending a request, and the server will send back a response. And in order for the client to send a request, it needs to know certain certain uh, pieces of information. So one part of the information that it needs to know is the IP address of the server. So it needs to know the IP address. And for example, an IP address can look something like this, like 127.0.0.1. And this is actually a very special IP address because this IP address represents our local IP address or the IP address of our home. So 127.0.0.1 is basically separated by these three dots and there's these four components. And the other thing that the uh, client needs to know is what port over uh, which they can communicate with the server. So imagine that the IP address is basically um, where the server kind of lives. And in order to access the specific service that you want to send data to, you need to know the port. Like a server might have multiple different uh, places for you to communicate through. And one of them might be a port that you're interested in. And there's a lot of common ports. So I'm going to wrap this server here in a, in a box where basically we have an IP address, right? So the server lives in an IP address. But then it sort of has like these ports, like this port and this port and this port. We can have like up to 16,000 ports. And depending on the port, uh, you can request certain types of information and the server is listening on one of these ports. So now let's say that you're a client. Your client in this example is the browser. And the browser that you're using, let's say it's Chrome. So I'm going to say browser it actually will try to reach like when you're trying to go on like youtube.com let's type in youtube.com here let's put it up here at the top and that's what you want to go to the home page for youtube what actually happens is first your request will get intercepted sort of by this thing called the dns server so i'm going to say it's going to get intercepted by the dns server And the DNS server is basically just like a database which contains a mapping of a domain name like youtube.com youtube.com to its IP address where whatever it might be let's just call it 144.122.23.10 okay so this is the IP address of where youtube.com lives and the other thing is that it's already been decided upon, but basically most servers are serving up in terms of web data on port 80 because port 80 is used by something called HTTP. So I'm going to say commonly we have port 80. I'm going to mention it down here. We commonly have port 80, 80 for HTTP. And then we have port 443 for HTTPS. This is a more secure version of HTTP. And there's a couple other ports like port 22, which lets you SSH into a server, meaning kind of like remotely enter it. And basically the important thing to know about these ports is that the server is going to be listening on those ports for certain types of requests. And it's going to respond back with a response based on some logic you'll write in the server side. So for example, usually we're working with something called HTTP data. And we're going to send to the server an HTTP request. 
and get back a HTTP response. And what that means is that we need to send data with a specific sort of structure uh, to get back data in another specific type of structure. And usually our client might be a browser, but we'll see in later projects that we can develop our own client, basically a front end application that will reach out to a server and the server will contain the backend information. Um, and in order for us to get back the data, we need to send a specific type of request and ask for and get back a specific type of response. And we're going to handle that response. So now before we build our backend server, one thing I just wanted to show you guys is that whole DNS domain name to IP address uh, component that we talked about. And to do that, I'm going to use this command called the dig command. Um, it's available here on my MacBook, but it's available on basically any Linux system. And we use it to gather DNS information. The dig command, D-I-G, stands for Domain Information Groper. Um, I don't know why they called it Groper. It seems kind of creepy. But basically, the command is helpful for troubleshooting DNS problems. And it'll show us um, the DNS sort of mapping between that IP address and the domain name. So if I do dig youtube.com, then you'll actually see that youtube.com is being mapped to this IP address. So this is the IP address of the server, of YouTube's server, that's serving up the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that makes up that youtube.com web page. So now let's go ahead and create our first Golang backend web server. To do that, I'm just going to create a, a directory called backend here. And in this backend folder, I just want to basically uh, run the go mod init command. So go mod init usama.com slash backend. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a main.go file. And if I do ls here, I should see the go.mod and main.go file present. I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code. And then I'm going to start off by saying package main in the main.go file. And there's going to be a couple of imports we need. Um, but first, let me just declare our main function here. So the imports we're going to need, um, one is called obviously the FMT package, which is going to be helpful for us when we're uh, pr pr printing stuff out in the console or sending back a write request like uh, sending back some data to the front end and we'll see an example of that the other package I'm going to use is the package called log and the log package in Golang kind of allows us to debug our program for any errors and it has a function called the fatal function which basically um, helps us like terminate our program if anything goes wrong and then the other package we need is the net slash HTTP package. And this is probably the most important package. This package will allow us to build HTTP servers in Golang. Um, and it has a lot of helpful constructs in it. So let's go ahead. And in our main function, what I'd like to do is first declare maybe a couple of variables. Um, the One of the variables, I'm just going to call it port. And I'm going to set it equal to uh, 8080, or maybe I'll set it to 8081. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say host, and I'm going to set the host equal to the string localhost. The next thing I'm going to do is create a function. Um, sorry, in the main function, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say HTTP dot listen and serve and HTTP dot listen and serve will take in our host that we declared uh, will basically take in the address so for us that will be the host plus the port so I'm going to just say host plus colon plus port right so this would basically the result of this is just localhost colon 8081 and the second parameter that it takes in as you can see you know, when I hover above this listen and serve is a handler. And that just means like, what kind of function will handle this. So in this instance, uh, we're not going to have any handler for this one. But the 
HTTP dot listen and serve uh, function is now taking in the address and this uh, nil here and what is it complaining about mismatch type string and int okay you know what I'm just gonna wrap this in quotes boom well that takes care of that so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, make our first function here uh, that will handle something so to do that one of the things I want to mention is that we can handle things and by handle I mean like we want certain URL routes to lead to certain um, functions like for example if we just want to hit this main um, page we're gonna be hitting the slash route just like the plain slash route so to do that what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and say HTTP dot handle funk and handle funk is going to take in our pattern for the URL so I'm gonna just say slash and then I'm gonna hand send in the f the function that's actually gonna run so I'm gonna call this function let's call it home page or something okay so the home page is basically if you went to localhost call an 8081 you should just see this plain home page and the home page function should fire and let's just declare our home page function here I'm gonna call it home page and the home page function will take in the write which is the HTTP dot response writer and they'll also take in the request itself so sorry HTTP dot request so the request is actually a pointer to the request um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say fmt dot print F sorry F print F and this will help us basically write a message out to this write to the dub so the W stands for the ACB dot response writer and we're gonna send into the response writer um, some value here so I'm just gonna say a string which just says welcome to the home page and the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and basically say down here that instead of just list listen and serve I'm gonna say that you know if something were to go wrong with this listen and serve I wanted to return the error and you know if error not equal nil meaning that you know the error if the error was empty that'd be good but the error is not empty so if the error is not empty that means there's an error and we want to basically leverage that log.fatal function that kind of brought up a little earlier and just say that something went wrong so this will actually kill our program and mention that something went wrong and I also want to print out the error itself and that should do it I might leave it put a return right here and so you can already see that this is a really simple backend web server we're going to basically have a home page function that sends back a, a, a response writer saying welcome to the home page and then we have our port and host our host is our local host and this actually technically means 127.0.0.1 that we talked about a little earlier um, so to reach this server I can say localhost colon 8081 slash and then this function will trigger which will say welcome to the home page and it'll show us welcome to the home page on the front end and the last step is just going to be running our backend server. So I'm just going to do uh, something to bring up the terminal here. And I'm going to call our go run. And then I'm going to mention the name of our module. So it's right here, right? In go.mod, when we initialized it, osama.com slash backend. I'm going to say osama.com slash backend. It's going to run this. And as you can see, it didn't print out any errors, and it's just stalling right here, which is a good sign, which means that's like running and nothing is wrong. So let's go ahead and check out on the browser what do we got going on. So now on my Google Chrome browser here, I'm going to type in localhost colon 8081 and put a slash here. And you can see that it's already sending me back welcome to the home page. If I click here and I open up more tools and go to the developer tools and I switch over to network and I re-hit this, this link you can see that it's hitting our local host it's getting back this as a response welcome to the home page 
And basically, this is what, you know, it's giving me a preview of what would happen. So you can see, like, basically information about the specific sort of uh, calls that we're making from the front end by going to the network tab. Now, technically, localhost is the same as saying 127.0.0.1. So we can actually just say instead of all this, we can just say 127.0.0.1 and then hit the colon 8081 and say slash and get back the same data. So this is the localhost IP address. And just to really quickly, before I end this, I just want to add one more function here. I'm just going to call it second page. And this function is going to say, welcome to the second page. Now I'm going to add a second page by just um, having another handler here. And this slash two route, we're going to call the slash two, is going to give us the second page. It's going to trigger the second page function, which will write to the um, front end, welcome to the second page. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to hit control C here to exit out of this. So control C. And now I'm going to rerun my backend. All right, looks good. So now I'm going to head back over here, 127.0.0.1. And then now I'm just going to add, before I was just putting slash here, now I'm going to say slash two and see what happens. So I'm going to put slash two, hit enter. And you can see it says, welcome to the second page. And if I was to click here, it's going to show me that the response is welcome to the second page. So as you can see, building a backend APIs uh, are not like a totally foreign thought to have. It's pretty straightforward procedure. Obviously, it can get much more complicated, but we could e just as easily um, return back to the front end and object or any uh, array or anything like that. And all we need to make sure is we give this the host and the port and we um, mention the slash URI is really important. This is how we like tell what resource we want. So you know, the client server model is pretty straightforward. I hope that this video taught you a little bit more about how the client server model works. In any case, I wish you guys the best of luck. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll check you guys out in the next video.